Many thanks for coming to this interview. My name is Steve Mokaya and um, I'm a correspondent for the African Voice today um, at the Jubilee headquarters um, with um, Honorable Jeremiah Kioni, the Secretary yes. General of, of the party. Welcome, sir. Well, thank you so much, Steve. Great. Mm. How have you been? To Kwazima, we are fine. Shukuru, we thank God uh -huh. for having uh, kept us alive. Uh -huh. Yes. Amen. How do you see? I, I, I love the environment. It's very quiet. It's in a car, in Nairobi. <laughs> and uh, this is how we would want the whole country to be. Uh, Quiet, calm, mm. and uh, moving. Mm. Um, and we, we like where we are. Mm. Uh, but we hope we can do better as a country. Speaking of calmness and quietness, mm. the country has not been very quiet. And mm. so there's, no, there, there's been lack of calmness and quietness. Mm. Uh, have you realized that yourself? <sighs> yes. Um, when we finished our elections last year, is it last year? Yes, last year. Mm. Or the other year, I think. It was, it was 2022. the other year. It's a year and uh, several months. almost two years yeah. now. When we did our elections, we thought we would get calm, quiet, and move on. Yeah. Um, we saw some, you know, uh, we were, became a bit uneasy because of the outcome of the results. We had the Azimio demonstrations. Mm. So that time we lost our calmness and then, but then we got to some discussions in Nadiko. Yes. We thought we were going to get something back. Yeah. But uh, while well, we thought that we are discussing the implementation of Nadiko, the country continued being tough. Mm. And the young people said, ah, mm. enough is enough. So they came up with Aguka Nayo, Namanena Migi. So the calmness has, uh, mm. uh, we cannot say that we are calm as a country. Mm. Um, we can clearly see that uh, uh, the younger generation, the youthful generation in the country have uh, shown their displeasure with the management of affairs of this country. Yeah. Um, and it is only fair that uh, they are listened to. So mm. the calmness that you would want to talk about is not there. Mm. As uh, whether there is hope, yes, Kenya, there is always hope. The resilience of Kenyans is an equal. I can see that after this uh, uneasiness, I am certain this country will hit the road running. Mm. Yes, but we cannot let it go. Yeah. Yes. So, in short, there's been that we've been having some roller coaster of calmness and mm. a lot of yes. uh, uh, bouts of demonstrations here and there. Mm. And the most recent, uh, the one that m maybe shook the country is the 25th of June yes. when the young people stormed parliament. You know, it was, it was some sort of a surprise to the country because, like, you know, people I think maybe in Mandamano and then people stormed parliament and a lot happened. Many people were killed and of course that, that led to the, um, a few changes after our president tried to, to be a tough guy but finally sort of caved in. So, what, what's your take about all that issue? I mean, that, all that context of young people, the Gen Z they call themselves, uh, the Gen Z, the millennials, basically the young people are now leading from the front, going um, after what they call bad governance, corruption and uh, opulence of the state officials. This has been long coming. And it's not just uh, during this uh, regime. Uh, 11th Parliament, you remember there was uh, a demonstration of uh, Kenyans who came, and I think it is 11th parliament, they came with the MPs. Oh, yes. And um, yeah. there was quite a mm. scene outside Bunga. Actually, that's when they, they brought b pigs. Eh? They brought Blue actually, way. they brought pigs yes. in, the, in the city, yep. outside parliament. We saw a little bit of it during 12th parliament. There was, uh, it wasn't as pronounced, but there was still a little bit of um, people congregating around parliament. Um, never had we, have we had the need for, uh, you know, police to get involved. So it's been long coming. So this one of uh, 13th parliament, it's because this institution of parliament has become non-responsive to the people's issues. Remember it is through parliament that Kenyans talk to the executive. Through parliament. But when Kenyans have now seen that they cannot talk to the executive through their people, the first place they wanted to impeach was that voice and say, we no longer trust this voice. The parliament now? Yes, parliament. Mm. We no longer trust this institution. So don't think you are talking to us when you talk to them. And don't think what they are saying, they are saying it on our behalf. That was the major statement 
that was being sent, not just within uh, the boundaries, but even with, for Kenya, those people outside this country mm. would want to transact with this country. They should know that in the institution of parliament lost its legitimacy when that breach was done. So it came as a surprise, of course. We never quite thought that um, we were going to get uh, Kenyans on the floor of the house. But it is a clear indication of people who've lost faith, trust and confidence with the institution of parliament. And members of parliament who are there, those who are in the executive, those who are in the judiciary, need to take note, judicial notice of that activity that happened on the 25th mm. of this, this mm. year. While well, the president said that it was, it was anarchy, the criminals tried to sort of, uh, some people have called it a, a, some sort of attempted coup, um, uh, the, prince, the president said that uh, the young people are criminals, anarchists, and, and all sort of names, and of course people have come out saying, no, we, how do you call people of what, and placards, uh, criminals and anarchists, you attack again. Again, um, it was a clear indication and demonstration uh, to the fact that uh, William Ruto and his whole administration have lost capacity to do anything. They have no capacity to move the pin from where it is to even another three, four millimeters uh, ahead. Why? If I were the one in the office of the president, it called for time to pause. A very serious thing had happened in the country. And I would be looking at how can we restart, how can we get the people to come on board? How can we give Kenyan, you know, a new lease of life? And you don't do that by coming to insult them. That day, every Kenyan, those who were in the streets and those who are not in the streets, mm -hmm. they said, we Ruto has called us criminals. Mm -hmm. He's called us terrorist. Yeah. He is not even sorry or remorseful. He did not even condole with the families that lost their young people who were just out in the street saying, we cannot make ends meet. The responsibility of any government anywhere in the world is to try and make it possible for people to have food, clothing, medication. Let them live. And when they come out and say, we can't buy food, we cannot send our children to hospital. We cannot take care of our children when they're in hospital. We can't buy medicine. We cannot send school to children. You don't call them criminals. You don't call them terrorists. You don't call the police officers to the streets to kill them, brutalize them. You don't even call the army in the streets. So what they did after those demonstrations only helped us to know and for those who had any doubts in their mind, to get clear, clear, to get it clear in our minds and in our system that there is no hope. The sooner they leave, the better. Let me tell you what came in the people's minds also, including myself. How can we get them out of office and still ensure that we have a country so that the, other people, the others who are given an opportunity to learn have a country. We don't want to go the Somali way, but we really need these people out of office. Mm. And that's what Kenyans said, and I joined them mm. in the same, in those, making those statements. Are you saying that there will only be hope for Kenya after Ruto and his, President Ruto and his um, administ administration is out? There is hope with Kenyans, and Kenyans have hope within themselves. They know if they are able to get these people out of office, the others who come in can only do better. Because this one is the worst that we have ever gotten since 1963. So the hope is not with the people in offices. The hope is with the resolve of Kenyans to get change. And also to have the realization at the back of their minds mm. that they don't want a corrupt country. Because they know the institutions need to still be available for whoever comes to manage it after them. Oh, yeah. And the other hope is that the resilience. We went very low, not as low as we are today when we were at Akanu. But Kenyans were able to call them to collect themselves back. And within a space of 10 years, less than 10 years, we were on the road running. With the new constitution that we gave ourselves 2010, if these people would just leave office, 
the damage that they have caused to the country will be undone within a year, within two years, and we'll be on the road running, and we'll, back, we'll be back on a positive trajectory. That's okay. the hope I'm talking about. Mm. But hope in them, zero. Hope in themselves as Kenyans, always there. Oh, great. Yes. Oh, and as people still on the Mandamano and the still, uh, the Gen Z and the millennials have, there's another bigger Mandamano even planned, or they, they say it will be bigger on Tarenani Mwizwanane, August 8th, or 8th of August this year, 2024. Um, what's your take on that? Um, what do you think might uh, happen on 8th August? One is that uh, I am fully in support of the Nane Nane. And I call upon Kenyans to take part in the Nane Nane. And while I do not know what the organizers have in mind in terms of Nane Nane, one of the ways I believe that we as Kenyans can get take part in is in if I was going to open my own kiosk, I will not open it that day. If I was going to report to the office that day, I will not report. And all members of staff in this office will not report. Mm -hmm. If you then want to go an, an extra mile and uh, take part in the protest, whatever they are, in your area, so be it. And everybody should be able to do that. I feel Nane Nane will be bigger than anything we have seen with the Gen Z so far. Mm -hmm. Why? It's no longer the Gen Z. It is the Gen Z, their parents, their children, their husbands, their wives. It's the country, mm -hmm. including people in the forces. In the forces? They may not say it, mm -hmm. but when you come across them, they are not opposed to what is happening. They may be on duty, coming to do things, there has been some form of restraint from some of the officers. We have seen excesses from others who also have been, and especially some officers who are brought into towns during the protests. Why? Because the hardship is being felt by everybody in the country. It doesn't matter whether you are in the army, in the police, GSU, NYS, or a member of the university, an employee, Shabba boy, house girl, whatever. Hmm. It's all of us. It will be terrible on those in the executive if they ever try to use excessive force. I don't think the outcome will be desirable for them. But Nane Nane is very important mm -hmm. and it is important that it succeeds. Why? We don't want cosmetic changes in the country. The sacking of the cabinet and then the appointing half of it, they need to be told it's a waste of time. The appointing into government of members of the opposition and members who we have no uh, hope or strength that they are going to bring any change also needs to be they need to be the bluff needs to be called out the fact that they have come to demolish multi-party democracy by trying to get the opposition into government and also for Laida the leader of uh, ODM to imagine that he can help these people in any way salvage their leadership in any way also needs to be called bluff. Nane Nane is a very important day for the Kenyans to send a statement yet again to William Ruto that you have missed it. You missed it then? You have even missed it with the kind of solutions you are putting on the table. You have not understood what Kenyans are saying. Mm. You may have heard, but you may not, I, it is clear you did not you have not understood. Sijui ni fuvuzera imejaa kwa masikio ama ni nini. But somebody I don't think who um, certainly uh, Raila has failed to sit him down because if the solution was to incorporate members of ODM into government, then even Raila may not have understood what the Gen Z and their parents and their husbands and their wives and their children are saying what the country is saying, we are headed the wrong way. Stop overtaxing us. Give us social support system. We want medication in hospitals. Employ doctors. 
employ teachers make sure that um, the the uh, those who are supposed to go to school are going to school take care of our mothers when they are giving birth we need the elderly taken care of stop wastage we do not want to see the opulence that you have uh, brought on board and many more natena puguza kidogo gauge ya uongo yes in the past we've seen even some uh, some Kenyans in diaspora they, they, they do mini demos in, in the embassies. Steve. Yes. One of the industries that just came naturally without even the government having planned it and it started during Kibaki's time. Mm. Because we had a lot of brain drain during moist time. Mm. But in terms of the usefulness of those who had left the country came during Kibaki's time is because we want foreign exchange. The people who are able to send pounds and dollars into Kenya are our own in the, in the countries outside. Before we were relying on coffee, tourism, tea, and some little bit of selling of uh, farm produce and the rest. Yeah. But they have come up so strongly that it will be very naive of any person in leadership to start thinking of them in a manner of punishing them with punitive taxes. What I saw with Uhuru was a time, and it started with Kibaki, was thinking of how do we make it even more conducive for them to invest in this country as opposed to where they are. How can we appreciate the role they are already playing in developing this country? What do we need to do to show them that we appreciate that there is a lot of social support they are giving to families that they left back home. The diaspora is one of the most important sectors in this country. I do not believe there are many sectors above it. If any, only two. They will be ranking three, most likely number two. Mm. We can work with the diaspora until they rank as number one. Mm. But we need to show respect, we need to show appreciation, and we need to make it easier for us to go and do biashara outside the country. One of the things that we can export is that human resource. Because of good training, mannerisms within the country, I, was, I had an engagement with the people of Dubai, the Emirates, and they are saying out of all the people who go to work in Dubai, the ones they respect most are Kenyans, because they are hardworking, and their psyche is different. They are not enticed into criminality like many other people from other countries. So it is a commodity we can export, but we need to have the respect and we need to recognize it as such. We've not done enough of it yet. Mm. We can do better. Diaspora are very, very crucial to us. And when you see them demonstrating in missions, why? Because it's a Kenyan out there but feeling the pinch mm. in here because he, is, he, or he, she, he or she is out there but he is sending money to maintain people or even do investment in the country and he can see the havoc that is being left on the, the ritual that he is sending into the country. Mm. So he or she can feel the same pain that is being felt here. And when you see them doing it out there, you need to listen to them also. Mm. Fortunately for them, the Kenyan police cannot uh, uh, met out yeah. their usual buttons on them. Mm. In fact, and we they, want to encourage them to yeah, join us more. In fact, they demonstrate outside the embassy so peacefully. Yes, yes. And, and like, uh, yeah. Kwa sababu wa pigwi, watu saidi zaidi uko. We as politicians need to be told a little louder that it's not always political crisis. It is not uh, that we are looking for you to be in government. See, the previous arrangement was that, oh, a section of the country has been left out. Get them in government. This is not the case. It's completely different this time. People are saying it does not matter who is the government. They are not delivering. They are taking us the wrong direction. Yeah. It does not matter. And it doesn't mean that uh, it is a po we are talking of a governance issue. So don't try and give it a political solution. We are looking for a, mm. an accountability, a solution to the accountability. Implement our constitution. And especially chapter 6. Get rid of incompetent characters from offices. Listen to what we are saying when we go to public participation. 
So what are Kenyans saying? Don't tell us. Do not tell us that we have a constitutional crisis. We have none. Don't tell us that we put the constitution on the table and you call us into a national convention or conversation. Mm -hmm. You've lost it. Yeah. We are saying the ritual that we are collecting, can we manage it well? Can you also stop being excessive in terms of taxation? Can you also recognize that when I get inside my compound, I have a private space? Stop coming to tell me that you want to know how I'm feeding my cow, how many chickens or chicks are in the compound. Mm -hmm. When did uh, my cat, you know, how many cats? Actually, there is a bill of that. Uh, there is a bill on the cats. And, yeah. and Kenyans <laughs> are aware. Yeah, very much aware. And they are aware. saying, yeah. we don't want that much of government in our lives. So it's not a pro political crisis. Mm. It is a governance, it's a capacity issue. And they've gotten to a point where they are saying, they say the, the issue of the finance bill, we are no longer saying a med, deject. Mm. Constitution, we are not saying amend, we are saying implement. When you say Ruto must go, it is not Ruto, it is Rutoism. And unfortunately, Laila must make sure that he's also not recruited in that Rutoism. Because they are saying out. Laila seems to have, lo to have missed the boat. He seems to have missed what Kenyans were saying. Mm. They have a problem with what they have seen Ruto do in the last two years and they have no confidence that he can manage us in the next three years. So if you come near him, utafagiriwa pamoja. Mm. And I want to tell you, Kwa utafagiriwa is actually collateral damage. Yes. Utafagiriwa yeah. within uh, the two and uh, two, three years, all at the end of the two, three years. Mm. Meaning, if it comes to pass that uh, we are able to get the, them out of office mm. before 2027, atawe utapere kwa Yeah. If it is then 2027, 2027, you will not survive. Mm. And I want to warn my colleagues in politics. What Gen Z have demonstrated to us is that they don't forget. They are never in a hurry to forgive. And they are not likely to give us a second chance. So tread very carefully with the issues that you are seeing being put on the table. Don't think William will give you any political cover at all. He has nothing to cover himself with. Mm. Why do you think he can cover you? Mm. Don't go in to be blamed for the mess that we are already in as mm. a country. Yeah. Those who think they can come and buy our parastatus now, please be informed. Do it at your own risk. All those contracts will not be given any legal effect by Kenyans once brutalism exists. Mm -hmm. So in short you're saying that whatever uh, the, the things that uh, President Ruto is implementing or is signing right now, once he's out of office they'll be nullified. And you'll have a lot of problem in any court in the world to go and say that you got a legitimate sale from Kenya. Parliament is impeached demonstration across the country against the, the Rutoism. If you then come and decide to invest now in our parastatus and the rest, what are you saying? You would never ever want this country ever stable because you seem like a person who trots the globe looking for where there is a crisis so that you can cash on. Mm. Kenya is not going to be part of that. Okay. And watch my words. Mm. Whoever gets into those deals now with Kenyans, you will have yourself to blame when the next, another government is put in place. Okay. The country, the Kenyans themselves, will be saying enough and we told you, why did you contract with them that time? When a parliament has been impeached, today I'm told Bangladesh, they have rejected their prime minister. Yeah, today he actually is, he's, he's fled the, he has fled the country. So if the guys here had conscience, the time parliament was impeached, you would, should have known your exit, exit strategy. Was the next thing really yeah so um when you say uh no sometime back i think a month or just three weeks ago president Ruto said that ah to shdown again while niambia finance being reject nika reject wakasema nini nika fanya uh cabinet nika toa so but again uh i've seen people especially young people saying that 
whatever he has done is not enough. And you, even yourself, you said that just a few minutes ago. But it, he's, he's made changes. I mean, he's made changes. Of course, there are those, um, some of the CSS who have come back, but the majority have, were not there before. Yeah. All the changes Ruto has done, including crafting Laila into his government, all uh, uh, members of ODM mm. into his government, it is an attempt at self-preservation. How can I win elections 2027? That is the only thing that like, Ruto is trying to answer. Bottom line, bottom line on all that he is doing, how do I make sure that I win 2027? Mm -hmm. and that's why he has completely lost it. Mm -hmm. He's completely missed it. Again, if I were in his shoes, and they are not shoes you would ever want to be in. Mm. It is to help Kenyans transit from himself to the next. Mm -hmm. That he will go down in history as having led the science of the time. But to try and survive by doing some mystical chairs, bringing in cabinet secretary, chasing, chasing the, changing them here and there, reappointing these ones and the rest, Zero. Mm. It is not necessary. Mm. Yes. Actually, three days ago, the embassy of the U.S. in Nairobi, uh, they, they sent some some subtle message. I think it, with regard to some of the CS nominees, and when they there was this statement on Twitter or X when they were saying that sub, it was I think it was something to do with integrity about uh, the belief in the parliament or the national assembly upholding integrity. Who do you think they were targeting? Because, I mean, uh, there have been guesses here and there. Maybe they were targeting so and so. Maybe they feel that some of the nominees are not. For uh, the Americans, too little, too late. Mm. They went to bed with William. William is in State House on their account. Really? But Kenya is what do you mean? Eh? I mean. They encouraged, supported, and did everything, including going to bombers during the counting of elections. They stand accused for having made it possible for a dictator to come to office, a person who has very true regard or respect to issues of democracy, human rights, and the fundamental freedoms that go with it. Number two, we hear them but we don't also understand them now. They look like in their country, where we have always looked up upon them, theirs is in Chabos. I do not understand how Halis, uh, Kamar Halis, is a presidential candidate in the coming days. That looks like a proper leaking. Mm. Something that we would never want brought into our system. Number three, we will be very encouraged if they were to go back to the days of Hempstone. We have multi-party democracy in this country because ambassadors like Hempstone stood with the people against the dictator and helped us achieve multi-party democracy in this country. Now we are in a case where we are looking at an ambassador who dined and wined with our dictator mm -hmm. only now to tell us, I, this guy, looks like uh, they are things. 274 bodies found at City Mortuary. City Mortuary last week. If it was the America we knew, they would have been the first one to find that to ask for an accounting of those bodies. Today, she is part of the people trying to sneak others into the state house to try and see whether Ruto can be given stability in the country. She was there with the Kiku Council of Elders. Ah, really? To state house to meet Ruto. When was that? To last week, trying to talk uh, Kiku Council of Elders to accept uh, William. While we are looking at dead bodies at Seto Mochali that have not been buried, they have gone short woods, nobody is holding the police to account. So we are really being tormented by those who are in office because they can see like some subtle support from countries like um, uh, US. May I dare also the UK have been quiet unusually. But uh, Gen Z are saying mm. now Kenya ni home. Mm. Tutanguka now. <laughs> Tutanguka now. Tutanguka now. Yeah. Atuna hata maana ya kugojia mwingine. Mm. We will sort it out ourselves. Mm. Americans remove the support 
and we even took those uh, things that you are making William talk about saying that there are investments coming mm. how are you going to invest when Kenya is in demonstration first things first mm. so little too mm. little too late but they are speaking about investments and Americans and the, okay basically the diaspora what has been saying uh, uh, about Kenya and kazi maju abroad mnakataa ku apply and people have been some people have been critical about that issue that you sending our young people abroad to work instead of you creating jobs here what's your take on that the ability of Kenyans to go anywhere in this world and offer services is something that we can never um, uh, wish anything else other than well. It's a very encouraging thing to hear that our Kenyans are, are becoming marketable across the board. To go and negotiate for them to do some manual work out of the country is not something that any government wants to do. People can end up doing those jobs. You can make sure that when they go and do them, it's safe and secure. But you should be occupy. You should preoccupy yourself as the head of the uh, the state with creation of employment within the country. Why you hear the misgiving is this: as he takes a, the, a flight to Dubai, to Uganda, to wherever Rwanda and uh, Kampala, in the same flight, he has Kenyans. Who are, who are fleeing from this country, investors who are relocating industries to those countries. What should be his first objective is to ensure what kind of an environment should I create so that Steve creates or establishes the industry in Kenya. So instead of my flying with Kenyans to Uganda to go and work in a company that would have been in, in Kenya, and then saying we are creating employment for Kenyans in Uganda. Why don't I create the environment here in Kenya? I keep giving an example of something that happens when I was a young man. Back in 1984, mm -hmm. the investor, I am sure Kenyans here and those in the diaspora, they know Sarit Center. The owner of Sarit Center, or the developer of Sarit Center, put it up back in 1984. What did he do? He actually even looked for money to help people set up shops in that place. Alikuwa na kuita, wewe unasikia ukita, ukazi yako ni gani? Mm -hmm. Mi nasema, mi usikia nikiwa daktari. I have a... Uh, and he would help you set up a clinic in his building. Mm -hmm. Those who wanted to do photography like you are doing all uh, this uh, industry you are in, mm -hmm. he would actually even come up with cameras for them. Today, look at Sari Center, look at the number of shopping malls that have developed in this country. That's what you do with the developers. Help them. Entice them. Let them come in the country. It will, it will cost us some money. Make sure that you have infrastructure development that helps. If it was not for the expressway, Gigili was going to be relocated from this country. Kenyans don't know that. Mm -hmm. But they needed to know that they can leave Gigili and to the airport and back. Expressway has now made it possible for us to retain the, the UNEP headquarters. Wait a minute, are you but saying that, that is not enough. We need to do more. Uh, are you saying that um, were it not for the expressway? If your infrastructural uh, levels are such that they cannot allow people from outside the country to come and invest in your country, what business do they have to come and do it? If from airport to UNEP it takes you 12 hours, why would you want to leave your office here? Why not take it to Rwanda? Where from the office to whatever is three, four minutes? Who wants to spend his time in the jam? If moving through Kenya with the transit goods, it takes 12 hours, 6 hours to go through Nairobi. Why would you want to come through here? You'd want to go through Uganda. But with the bypasses that were created, they take now less than 30 minutes. True. We have more trucks passing through Kenya than before. When you do the SGI, those are infrastructure development. And Kenyans need to be told what the benefits are from them. Mm. Instead of Ruto, mm. when he was in government as a deputy president, explaining to Kenyans what this infrastructure development were meant to achieve for us, he badmouthed them. Mm -hmm. He said it's a waste of time. Mm -hmm. And for that reason, those developments, he came into office, he still has not seen any value in moving them to point B. Mm -hmm. What has happened now? We invested heavily when uh, we had uh, Uhuru, but instead of him helping the, us to leap benefits from this infrastructure development, He's taken us to another tangent. So the country has gone. We are doing worse 
then we should have then we ever imagined at any given time mm. bring it all on him mm. actually uh for the longest time that i've been following you you've been a very serious critic of of Ruto almost almost immediately was elected so one might wonder what do you have <laughs> i was critical Ruto? of Ruto mm. before he was elected yeah. i was critical of Ruto before i knew he was going to run mm. when he was a member of parliament for Sugoi area that mm. uh, Eldoret North, Eldoret North. Mm. I, I filed a motion of impeachment on the floor. It was when he was there and as, as a minister of agriculture that we had the miscado in this country. So it's a person, I, it's nothing personal, but his, uh, his, his drive is different. His drive is towards some gratonious levels that's unbelievable. He believes in himself only, he doesn't consult anybody. And he, whatever he decides is right is what you must do, whether you like it or not. That's not the kind of a person you want at the helm. Mm. So I knew him. May I even say that I had my own misgivings, even when they came together with the Uhuru during 2013. Really? Yes. You were going to say And that. we had, we, we but sat, you are listen, buddy. we sat and said, <laughs> yeah. we have to be careful. Yes. <laughs> this gentleman, yeah. we don't know what it is that we are taking on board. Mm. But the, the realities of the time, the ICC and the issues that were there crowded that kind of reasoning. And we needed to move on as a country. So, if you see me being critical, it's not to William Mutoto eh, Abaya Rizari Wanamama, Pandi Yauko Nandi. Apana, it is to his way of doing things. He's, um, he, he has a very, he's very ambitious and very, very pushy, but his capacity is completely zero and he has no room to accommodate any view from any other person. And um, he's also f a bit uh, vengeful, mm. not a bit. Mm. Yeah, that you have not seen from him. Yeah. But uh, his vengeance, yeah. uh, you can see it. When they left office with Uhuru, the first person he attacked was Uhuru. Mm. So ni mutu tena anajiripia, anajiripishia kisasi na nibofu. Mm. Kwa siyasa, haina maneno ya, ya, ya kujiripia kisasi. Mm. You don't go that way. Politics, you pull and you pull, you yeah. pull differently. Mm. But once you're in power, you never use your power to hurt any other person. Mm. Never use it. Edelea, look at Kibaki. Edelea, we umalize wende. Yes, Kibaki alikuwa natuwabia usifikiri ulizariwa ati we ufanya kazi yote ikuwa we. Kuna wengine wamezariwa, fanya hile kidogo unafanya, wakati yako yodoke, wende. Achio mungine. And that's what he did. Yeah. Yes. By this, speaking about vengeance and, and maybe the Ruto, Uhuru relationship, eh? Uh, Ruto himself, since, uh, since he came to, uh, into office as the president, uh, he's been uh, by proxy and directly um, blaming the former president for maybe the, uh, the crisis or the problems that be the uh, the country because at first they were saying they found empty coffers. Juzi uh, Mesema, there was a talk that Uhuru is sponsoring the Gen Z Mandamano, then later they changed tune to maybe Ford and other and, and, and you know and what have you. So, what do you think? Um, you know, it, 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 it sort of gives that. Whatever the whatever comes across, maybe that Ruto feels that the president, the former president, is still active in politics, but through through another maybe. Um, when Uhuru was in power, mm. Kibaku was a very powerful person, and especially in Mount Kenya. It is not in one occasion or one function that Uhuru appeared together with Kibaki, and you could see the shelling of people on Kibaki. But that did not disturb Uhuru. He knew he had a mandate. He had, he had come on board with a promise that he needed to mm. make sure that he lived on to it. Mm. Secondary, and because you learn through examples, when Uhuru, when Kibaki took over from Moi, since it required Vijana, Kama wewe tu, mm -hmm. joto, huu yeah. mutu wamefanya Kenya nini, tutaweka ye kidani, tutafunga ye, we do what. So we would go to Kibaki and tell him, eh, unajua kama, kama moja ya giangalia pesa na mnai, and Kibaki will not allow you to get to the next sentence. Never ever. And I learned a lot from him. He would ask you on the spot, and I hope you record this for mm -hmm. Kenyans to hear. Yes. Hii vitina unamuka nae, asubui, sanane, jioni, itakusaidia na nini? Kichwa hii yako hiko kitu ingine ama ni fitina tu. That's what you to ask us. Because you know we really campaign against scan. 
and it was very vicious and Kenyans were very angry. But he would always ask you that. Iyo hakiri unatoa wapi? Fitina kwa kichwa, asubui, sanane, saakumi, utakura. So he would turn the heat on us who would ever want to say anything on Moi. Murungaru, Kimunya, and uh, I think the, the finance for finance minister that time, Akira Muraria. Of course they came to office and they said the first stop, Moi. He has ruined this country. What did Kibaket do? He told the Kujeni. Wapire Taitoyake, Pari Anaishi. Can you transfer that property to him? Really? And then make sure Wewe, Kemunya, Namurugaro, deliver the title to him. The very bitter ones are the ones he made to deliver the title to Moi. Title to Moi. Mm. So what was he trying to teach us as so he young people? He was trying to tell us, yeah. visions in politics does not help you as a country. Can you angalia bele, tegeneza ile unaweza. Kama cheria itapatana na hawa, hiyo siyo shidako. You have the law, you have the constitution, you have the police, you have the intelligence, everybody. Mwenye atapatu wa nichaudi yake. Lakini siyo jukumi yangu kukaa hapa, nianze kutafuta tafuta wandu. William, Gachagua and the whole team, they came to office with one in mind. Funga uhuru na watu yake. Fuja jubili na chama yake. That is why they have wasted two years looking at the side mirror and not knowing that the vehicle is still moving yeah. until they crashed into Gen Z. Mm. Now they are trying to deal with a fatal accident mm. that they are in. Mm. I doubt they are going to come out of it. But, but sir, by the, actually, we've seen uh, the deputy president, Rigadi Gashawa, sort of warming up to Uhuru, he's been saying of late, Uhuru ni kijana he has to be respected. Why do you think it's the change of tune end? And, and still on that... Unajua, uh, umechika wanyama wawili kwa umeweka kwa kikapu moja. Mm. Na watu wanafanana, wanaanza kukurana nge kwa kikapu. So, Rigadi is realizing that this, some of these bites are becoming vicious mm. and he is trying to jump out of the basket. They are two of a kind. Um, it is good that uh, Rigadi is waking up and realizing that um, he started it all along. When you are a deputy of somebody, you should go and try and... If he is too hot-tempered, you try and bring the temper down. If you think he is extreme in this time, you try and uh, ameliorate. But yeye, alishika mutu ambaya kichwa imechemuka anataka kukibia badei akaongeza. So that is why they went even kuiba mpaka kodo, wamembomua mpaka kwake. Wegini wanaenda kusema watakojua kwa our mothers huko inje. That excessive, they, they went beyond because they all, none of them would tell the other one, hey, if Rigadi is now, I hear, I've listened to him, uh, they are waking up to this reality. It is good because it also slowed down the damage that would have been occasioned on Kenyans and on Kenya as a country. And I hope that uh, we can make uh, good out of anything left. But remember, Gen Z, they've already have, uh, they already have crashed into Gen Z. And I don't see how they get out of that fatal accident. Mm. Yes. And do you think... Um because I think the deputy president has, 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 has been trying to come across as the kingpin of the mountain, you know, the mlima, I think, the, 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 yeah, you know what I mean? Because of the very long st starting point, they came thinking they are, that they are coming to dethrone Uhuru. But and all that Uhuru had was the, the, the instruments of power, yeah. which he transferred to them at Kasalani and as provided for in the constitution. But there are also other things that he can never ever transfer to you. They belong to him. Like the respect he has across the country in Mount Kenya region. That belongs to him. And any time you seem like you want to disrespect him from that angle, you become the ruser. He never tried to do that to Kibaki. Not one day. He never ever tried to do that to Kibaki. Kibaki never bothered him with this when he was ruling. How I wish they learned from, from him. Moi, with all the things we wanted to assign to him, rightfully so or whatever, during his canon regime, never came to disturb Kibaki. Haku Karibia. Ile Vitaote Uliona lived very during the years 2006 and ever. It was Rutos and his team. Mm. It wasn't Moi. He left and went to Kabarak. How is it that we can't run from these old people? Whoever takes over after Ruto, we don't want to see him following after Ruto. 
even with all these heinous crimes that he is committing, you are chewe here in a family. Yake. We want to move on ahead as a country. Mm -hmm. We don't want somebody following at the Sudia Rinunua. We don't want that's nonsense. Leave them to go. The Wenyesumugu deal with them. Still on Mount Kenya, uh, do you think Rigat uh, Gashawa will be impeached? The impeachment of um, Gachagua is yes. being managed by Ruto. It is Ruto who wants to impeach Gachagua. Gachagua, and he wants to use Kikuyus from Mount Kenya to impeach one of their own. It is a longer game, political game, planned for Mount Kenya region. They would want to see how can we sprinter them so that they are left fighting one another as they try and manage the country. Any person from Mount Kenya who would undertake on impeaching a Chagua, he should know that he is not doing it on behalf of anybody. It is not in the interest of us to impeach a Chagua. Mm. He is not a darling of us either. But it is politically, it is makes nonsense of us to start engaging in housekeeping within Uda. Let them deal with it. And uh, we as Azimio, even when uh, we sat with Raida the last time, we agree that we have nothing to do with the impeachment of Rigadi. It doesn't help us in any way. It does not help us with the problems we have in the country. What Gen C have said is that they want the impeachment of the whole system, the Rutoism. So it's not Gachagua and you leave Ruto, it is not Ruto and you leave us with Gachagua. Ah, ni wote na wafarangayao yote. Mm. And that, uh, if people are able to understand it that way, we'll be able to focus on the bad governance, the accountability issue, mm. before we are diverted uh, one way or another. Okay. Yes. Okay, great. So uh, let's uh, uh, sort of shift gears to Azmio and let's now look into Azmio Kidogo. Um, ODM, there are signs that ODM is now in marriage with uh, the Kenya Kwanzaa ruling coalition. Basically, it's in the government. And we saw uh, NAC, they say that they're pulling out of the Azmio. And, uh, you know, the rest, even Kailonzo Msioka, even DAP, um, Eugenio Amalua, they have sort of distanced themselves from what, what ODM and Rila did. So do you think, is, oh, sorry, is, is rather Azimio still alive and will it survive until maybe the next election or it will collapse? Azimio, unlike other coalition formations that have been there before, mm. is, uh, has um, a legal basis. One is that we passed an act of parliament that uh, provided of how a, a coalition parties and coalition agreements will be managed. Two, so we have a statutory uh, way of managing the coalition and we have a statute that governs its management. Uh, two, we signed legal documents as parties when we were getting into ASMIO. Those instruments have been deposited with the Register of Political Parties. They are also in Parliament. They are also with the uh, IEBC. So that is unlike what was happening before. Remember the agreements were signed pre as opposed to post before elections as opposed to post the constitution of kenya then informs the formations because it talks of majority versus minority so there are things you and i may want to do in a coalition that you will not affect those in instruments because they are built you have your own control. When we got into Azmio, we got there as parties, but there is also Azmio as a party. So Azmio is a coalition and also Azmio as a party. Remember, Raida Moro was a candidate for Azmio party, not ODM. He was not a candidate for ODM. ODM did not field a presidential candidate 2022, 20, that period. Azimio fielded. When you now say that you want to leave Azimio, there is a procedure which you must follow as provided for in the statute. You can write a letter and say oh, you have left. But the date that the, the date or the time it will take effect, it is some um, almost six months down the line for you to exit from that arrangement. Mm. And during that time you are still bowed by what we agreed on as a Zimio. So, uh, to say that Azimio 
has gone turned into government, Kenyans have completely lost it. It is ODM that started by wanting to get in government. And may I say this, when they realize how difficult it is, they now required those in ODM to resign from ODM and be remain like ordinary Kenyans so that they then can join government. So legally, Badi, Oparanya, Joho, who else is there? Mm, I think you've, you've done all of them. Yeah, Badi, Oparanya, Joho, there is a fourth, I'm wow, forgetting. Wadai. Wadai. Yeah. They are joining UDA in their personal, individual capacities as Kenyans. But all those who are leaders in the, in the ODM. Who have now resigned, mm. and ODM will replace all those leadership positions. Mm. So, legally, technically, as ODM is in, as Mio, and in opposition, because they will be sitting on the minority side. Mm. That is the argument you see from Molengo and everybody else. But in terms of optics, is that literally, you, it will be very difficult for you to see ODM and see UDA as being in opposing camps. They will deal with the optics, because that's their own politics. We in Azmio are in the minority in the opposition. And we had our leader as Laila Amoro Odinga, who has now decided to up his game and uh, you know, uh, pitch for AU seat. And we wish him well. And we had a, a meeting where we literally it was a bye-bye meeting. We us wishing him well as he goes to AU, and now saying, with those of us being left in Azimio, we now reorganize ourselves to ensure that we have a viable, we have a vibrant, and we have a team that is going to keep these people in check and are going to support every opposition energy activity that is put on the table, be it by Gen Z or any other group. Now that's why I'm saying I can tell you from here, as a, a member, one of the key members in Azimio, that we support Gen Z, including Nane Nane, what is coming. Because it is an activity within the ranks of opposition. And the governments must respect that and not come with the, the very brutal heart that they have shown in the past. Mm. So where we are today is where? It is where we have members of ODM who have gotten enticed and have moved into government. They will explain to us what it means when you talk of hustler fat. Mm. It will be embarrassing to see them increasing taxes while we've been with them saying taxes must be lowered. Mm. Increasing the cost of fuel while we've been with them in the trenches saying the cost must go down. But there's a choice they have made. There's a choice they have made and they have their own reasons. But they've not dragged us there and we don't belong there. And any attempt to drag us there will be resisted. So as Mio is intact because it is an institution created through a legal process and you cannot break it by having roadside uh, declarations and as Mio will still be available for those who do not want to work with government this time and are even not members of Azimio because they can join in and drive it as an opposition vehicle, a vehicle that is going to form the next government. Mm. So I know there are people who are looking at how do you get out of Azmio. I want to challenge those uh, colleagues of mine, uh, including those other political parties that are in Azmio. I do not see the, the reason why you would want to struggle uh, leaving an institution we put up together and created together. Lida has left, he's gone to AU. And Lida was not Azmio, he was only the leader of Azmio. And he has also said he would want to leave ODM to another generation because he's leaving. So this is a transition period and it is a, it's a political acumen mm. of every person yeah. that will help us get out of it. Some will make some terrible mistakes, um, and, but I believe that uh, somehow we will eventually get there. Mm. Mm. So when you say that Azmio will make the next um, government, so is Azmio filling a presidential candidate in the next elections? As we are today. Azimio will field a presidential candidate. Nobody has come to compete with Kalonzo to mm. date. Mm. Yes. Mm. So as it is right now, Kalonzo remains Kalonzo has indicated de that he would want to be a presidential candidate. Mm. We haven't seen any other person say that within Azimio. And uh, he is a de facto leader of Azimio in the absence of Raila Amora Odinga. He is the senior most. And even when Laila was there, the person he would delegate uh, to uh, directly was Kalonzo. Mm. What I can say is that uh, one of the best qualities or characteristics of a government 
is the one that is able to continue with what the previous government or regime was doing. When you come and ignore Kenyans' rules, both in terms of time and in terms of resources. We have William now here in State House. We all are complaining that he doesn't know where he wants to take Kenya next. He doesn't even know whether he wants to move on or to remain where he is. But it will be important for whoever comes after him to also just find out what was done. For example, he's demolished State House literally because all the internal walls have been brought down. He's now operating from uh, Ajukoa on the lower side. Is a is a little Ajukoa um, Adias. Mm -hmm. That's where he's operating from. When you come into State House and then you start now demolishing the Ajukoa. Yes, and you don't finish the internal alterations that you wanted or are useful, you still take us back. Sometimes you have to make, you have to manage the bad work that was being there and make sense out of it so that we can move on. We shouldn't lose focus. Mm. We will uh, let's remain on course. What is happening in the country in terms of resisting bad governance is good for this country. It is a way now to fight corruption because it has been an animal that we've not been able to manage in the past. Yeah. But Gen Z have come up with a new resolve and we will be able to get to a better place okay. in the very near future. Mm. Yes. Thank you so much.